Yeah. Okay, so when I started working on this speech, I asked Eminem if there was anything specific he'd like me to say to everybody, something that he would like them to know. And he said, okay, um, number one, I want you to tell everybody I have a huge penis. <laughs> But when he started counting, I was wondering why he decided to use this finger. Oh. <laughs> All right, let me get serious. Okay, over 20 years ago, Jimmy Iovine, who was also one of tonight's inductees and one of my best friends, played a demo tape for me from a guy who called himself Eminem. The first thing I said when I heard it was, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> I loved it so much that I couldn't stop listening to it, and a few days later, Jimmy called me up and he said, Hey, Trey, you know he's a white guy, right? <laughs> Completely fucked me up. <laughs> the last thing I was thinking about when I was listening to the music was that he was a white guy. It never even crossed my mind, but looking back, I don't know why it didn't cross my mind. He certainly didn't sound like a black rapper, especially because of what he was saying. I guess it was my ignorance at the time, thinking that, okay, if you're a good rapper, you must be black, right? Not too long after that, we met for the first time. We hit it off, and the next thing you know, we're in the studio at my house working. The first time I put on a beat, he got on the mic and said, hi, my name is Excellent Shane. <laughs> Then came the backlash. Look at him, Dre. This guy has blue eyes. You can't sign him. There was a massive amount of resistance from my own team and people around me that didn't want me to work with him simply because he was white. Didn't want me to sign him or anything like that. While everyone else around me had their doubts, I knew that his gifts were undeniable. That's right. Yeah. His raw, dark, humorous lyrics, coupled with an impeccable cadence, stood out from everything I had ever, had ever heard before. And he was hungry. Both of us were. We were two artists in do or die situations. He was desperate to find a way to feed his family, and I was searching for something that I could sink my teeth into creatively. Each of us were exactly what the other one needed, and I was willing to bet my entire career on that. Yeah. Facts. My rebuttal to those naysayers was something like this. He's going to be the best selling artist on our label. <laughs> Little did I know, he was going to be one of the best selling artists of all time. Introduced himself to the world with the Slim Shady LP. He skyrocketed to the top of the charts and stayed there for 100 weeks, earning himself a Grammy for Best Rap Album, Best Rap Solo Performance. And can you believe, after promoting violence to little children, killing his daughter's mother, this guy still had more shit to get off his chest? <laughs> and then his sophomore album comes out, right? Um, the Marshall Mathers LP drops. Oh! On that album alone, his alter ego Slim Shady tied me up in the basement. He had sex with his mother, killed his daughter's mother again. while proceeding to offend about every special interest group we have. <laughs> it clearly 
struck a chord and became one of the fastest selling albums in United States history. Yeah. Eminem would go on to overdose, relapse, recover, and not only on his albums in real life. But let me tell you something. This guy goes through a lot of shit just to get a concept for a song. <laughs> but here's Eminem's genius. With his incredible wit and wild imagination, he was able to hold a mirror up to white America while also expressing pain through poverty and dysfunctional families devoid of hope. Eminem brought hip hop to middle America and offered kids who looked like him a way to connect to him. Hip-hop wasn't just for black kids in desperate inner-city circumstances anymore. People of every stripe and color had the art form speak to their struggles also. Eminem wasn't just the underdog who broke through the glass ceiling of hip-hop. He shattered that shit. Over 220 million albums sold. 13 number one albums, 10 of which all consecutively debuted at number one, making him the first artist to ever achieve this shit. Yeah. Grammy Awards, an Emmy, an Oscar. Yeah, making him the best selling artist of the 2000s best-selling hip-hop artist ever. Let me repeat that. The best-selling hip-hop artist ever. And the crazy part about it is he doesn't even really care about that. I think I care about it more than he does. You know? What's most important to him is that he's earned the respect of his peers as one of the best to ever do it. Point blank. Turns out, this unassuming white guy with blue eyes from Detroit being repeatedly turned down and turning everything we thought we knew about hip hop on his head while forcing us to confront our own biases, growing right. not only the genre, but all of us right along with it. That's right. Point blank.